In this video, I cover a question from somebody which is, is private bridging a viable alternative? This comes up quite often uh, and it is also popular, uh, but not everybody seems to sometimes grasp it. So private bridging serves a purpose and that purpose, generally speaking, is you either can't get a loan elsewhere or you've got a loan elsewhere and you need some form of mezzanine finance i.e. there's a gap so let's say you need £300,000 the bank's giving you £200,000 you need another £100,000 which you can't raise so in that scenario you would go to a bridging company or a private uh, bridging company the same would apply if you look let's say you're buying a house it doesn't have a kitchen and a, and a bathroom uh, a mortgage company says it's uh, uninhabitable for mortgage purposes therefore they won't give you a loan so you can either get those things fixed through the, the existing owner the seller or you can get uh, a private bridging loan get those things fixed and anything else and then refinance through a traditional lender uh, that pretty much is uh, in, a, in a roundabout way I'm, I'm not covering every single thing but in a roundabout way those are the kind of common scenarios uh, why people use a private bridging company uh, and the crux of the matter is simple if there's enough profit in the deal if the deal is good enough and it's workable and once you do your sums even having paid the costs of uh, private finance if the deal works then go for it absolutely if it's a very very tight deal and you need to include private bridging in there it's going to cause a loss and if you're not going to be able to make up that loss uh, in the short term uh, or even in the medium term it probably isn't worth doing so the benefit is you get the cash pretty quickly less questions asked and they're reasonably flexible so that you can get bridging finance from one month up to around 18 months that I've seen some maybe longer some uh, but usually between one to 18 months obviously one month is going to be uh, very expensive and they tend to charge you around about anywhere from say 0.8% to 1.5% per month some may be cheaper than that some may be more expensive than that but but if you in your mind average out 1% per month that should get you there or thereabouts uh, so it's not cheap but it is a solution to a problem or challenge that you have which is you can't get the cash you need to get the cash your traditional high street banks aren't interested your the bigger challenger banks aren't interested those who do development finance aren't interested so you want to do the deal and if the deal works and, uh, and the margins there then bridging finance is a good alternative a lot of people use it I've used it it works well uh, and it's a really neat way of getting to do deals of course once you've done a few deals and you've got better experience and history then that's going to open up more avenues for you even then it's not to say that you won't have an opportunity where your need for bridging finance even then you may have a deal which is uh, margin wise maybe slightly tight but numbers wise big let me give you an example let's say you're doing a deal where you're making a 20% margin on a development uh, now 20% is kind of average or for me I, I, I want more than 20% uh, but some banks might not be too happy with that uh, and it might not work for their loan to value on GDV for example uh, which therefore means you then need to find bridging finance to bridge the gap but overall because it's a big deal you're making £500,000 profit so the profit hard number is good but the margin is tight and therefore the numbers don't stack up on the appraisal for a traditional lender and you have to go to a, a bridging company and let's say you have to pay a hundred grand to a bridging company you're still left with four hundred thousand pounds so from your point of view even though the, the physical margin gets tighter the number four hundred thousand pounds works for you overall and you might think that is a reasonable exchange in terms of the benefit you're going to get which is going to enable you to make four hundred thousand pounds it's a reasonable exchange to pay a hundred thousands hundred thousand pounds to get to that place so it's all about doing the numbers working it out making sure it works for you making sure that the deal is not gonna uh, be killed off by paying a bridging company and if that works then I'd say seriously consider doing it 
that's how I use bridging. That's how most of my clients use bridging. Uh, if you've got other alternatives, feel free to share them in the comments below.